to say some words in the beginning, but since no other showed up. Um, I agree with most parts of that what you have said, Mr. Mahbubani and uh, Stefan Aus was not far from your position. The one question I would have uh, and put on you, Mr. Mahbubani, you said uh, and you, you diagnosed that most countries, for example in Asia, uh, looking on the Road and Belt Initiative and on the vaccination of the Indonesian president, don't have any mistrust towards China. But my question would be, is it, um, uh, is it justified to trust in China? So my question would be, if you have, for example, deeper economic trade relations, Germany, for example, um, would there be the situation, or could there be the a situation where you could get blackmailed by, uh, by uh, China since the, 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 um, the deepness of the trade relation could bring, for example, Germany in a weak position? That would be my, uh, my question. And uh, I agree what you have said in regard to, to the United States. Um, they, they don't like the idea that China could, be, uh, could become number one and they, they battle this idea by words up to now. But on the other hand, um, as you mentioned uh, some minutes ago, the Biden administration always has said, we stay, we keep on to the, to the one China policy and even the Trump administration never has um, crossed out this uh, one China policy therefore. Um, where do you see any action, any, any military um, preparations or so from the, the United States that they really would fight these ideas that, this idea that China could become uh, um, number one? I, I don't see this development up to now, and uh, you're right, uh, I would agree, if um, uh, the United States would take any, any steps to, to battle China becoming number one, that could be a very dangerous situation, but up to now, I personally don't see this development. Maybe you can uh, give us some explanation how this could develop and, and um, happen in your view. Mm. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, the first question on trust, second question on how China is blocking, uh, how United States is blocking China's rights. But I hope, by the way, I hope you all have questions for well, Stefan too, uh, please. It's a real privilege to have Stefan. No, but you're the expert. No, no, he's he's he's. It's a real privilege and pleasure to have him. So let's let's en let's engage him and get uh, his wisdom too. Well, I'll, I'll 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 answer your question first. On the question of trust, I want to emphasize that as someone who practiced diplomacy for 33 years, I'm just an old-fashioned realist. Okay, and I believe that countries have no permanent friends, no permanent enemies. They only have interests. And most countries in the world will do business with China, whether or not they trust or distrust China is irrelevant. The question is whether or not you, will, you can do business with China. And to give you a concrete example, right? Take Brazil, for example, right? Uh, in the year 2000, it took Brazil one year to export uh, $1 billion to China. Now it takes Brazil 60 hours to export $1 billion to China. So whether they trust China or distrust China, they will do business with China. Let's be very clear. This is what most countries in the world. So the trust, therefore, is, is a, I would say, is not a factor in, in international relations uh, among most countries uh, in the world. And you, know, you mentioned, by the way, a case of China bullying. I want to say that the idea of a benevolent superpower is an oxymoron. All great powers will assert their interests, and all great powers will bully small states, whether it's Russia, whether United States, China, it doesn't matter. They will all bully small states, and that's a reality. And if you want a concrete example, Joseph Stiglitz, the Nobel laureate in his book, has given a classic example when Ethiopia was very, very poor, I think in the 60s or 70s, it repaid a loan early to American banks because the interest rate was too high. The American banks complained to the US Treasury. The US Treasury called the World Bank. The World Bank pulled loans from one of the poorest countries in the world, Ethiopia, because Ethiopia 
paid off American banks too early. So that's a simple example of all great powers behave in a certain way, and we have to accept that. That's a reality. Now, on your second point about how the United States is stopping China, I can tell you that there is a powerful, deep consensus in Washington, D.C., that China has to be stopped. Now, first phase was the trade war. You've seen that already. And what's interesting is that Biden, as you know, doesn't agree with Trump on anything, hasn't been able to lift a single tariff on China. That's one, one instrument they're using. Number two, technology. There's a massive technology war has begun. And therefore, the United States will see which are the areas in which it can maintain an edge in technology and ensure that China never catches up. And China will try its hardest to catch up. So the big technology race has begun, right? Then number three, making sure that countries are pushed or nudged to was moving to the United States side. You've seen that with Australia, you've seen that with Japan, and that's what's going to be a, a, a very hard push. So you've got to be ready. And you'll be asked suddenly to make a choice. A simple example is Huawei, right? Many countries wanted to buy Huawei because it's cheaper. <laughs> Guess what? You buy Huawei, you get some pressure. I can tell you in da my last Davos meeting in January 2020, and I was talking to a room like this to a group of CEOs, okay? And my the, the person next to me, I cannot mention his name, was a very distinguished British citizen, very distinguished. And I asked him the question about Huawei. He says, Kishore, the UK has got some of the best intelligence agencies in the world, right? It's true. He says, we have planted our people in Huawei. We have scrubbed everything. Huawei is not a threat to us. I said, hang on a second. Washington DC will call you. Mm -hmm. And this British gentleman went like this. Kishore, who do you think, you know, we are? Right? Of course, UK is going to stand independent. January 2020. July 2020, UK capitulated. That's the war. 